just like you and me, you know, your fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, city as well. So thank you very much. I'll pass you over to Carolyn Harris. Cameron Harris, Member of Parliament for Swansea East and Shadow Home Office Minister. Every day in my working life I see people who have been left destitute and homeless, have left their families behind and they've sought sanctuary in our country because there's nowhere else for them to go. These people are pained, these people are hurting and these people have witnessed things that we could never dream of witnessing. It is very sad that our government is not doing all it can to bring these people, especially the children, into safe arms of the people of this country and especially of Swansea. Swansea is a city that welcomes all, loves all, cares for all and extends the hand of friendship to all. And I am very sad that any child, any adult, any individual or any person belonging to the LGBT community is forced to return to dangerous countries who will need to fulfil a quota which this government has decided is an adequate number of people that we can help. Every day I have people come into the office who have been exposed to atrocities, they are frightened, they cry, they have children that have been born and brought up in this country and now we're expecting to send them back. I know of one gentleman who's been in this country for 48 years and he's come from America. He's now Welsh, he's been brought up in our schools and just last month the Home Office turned up at his door to try to deport him back to America. This man is as Welsh as you or I. The Home Office has lost the plot. The Home Office, under the guidance of this Conservative government, has now decided that the selection process, but that's what it is, a selection process, to decide who can stay here is so extreme that our own are being sent back to countries that they've never ever had any time to become part of. And I am absolutely astounded by what can be done and what's being said by this government. I'm Matthew Hemsley, I'm the Campaigns and Advocacy Manager for Oxfam Cymru. I'm here today because this is the greatest humanitarian crisis that there's ever been. There's 65 million people uh, on the move currently, more than there were in World War II. Um, that's more than the population of the UK. And we need to, as communities here in Swansea, in Wales and the UK, stand up and do more uh, to help people who are fleeing conflict and disaster and persecution in their own home country. Um, last week I was in uh, Lebanon and I met a family from Raqqa in Syria, a city that's ISIS controlled. And they told me, um, you know, in very passionate terms about the situation they face there, the restrictions on their freedoms, uh, they could, you know, barely leave their home, there's no opportunity to work and have a life, and they were forced into fleeing. And now they're living in a camp in Lebanon, a tented community, with, with nothing. They had to use that, they've been living off their savings and have to use their other money to get out. We need to do more to stand up and help these people. Their families, uh, like you and I, people like you and I, who had jobs, who had work, and their situation is something that we can't imagine, and we need to stand up and help them. So here today, we want to get that word out, that our leaders in Swansea, in Wales, right across the world, need to do more to help these people who are in desperate need. What do you think of the turnout, uh, Matt? I think it's fantastic. I think there's going to be, you know, two, three hundred people here. I think that's really positive. We know that there's a huge march going on in London today as well that some people from Wales have gone to. I think it shows there's a strength of feeling behind this. And we need people that are here today to talk to their friends, their family members who aren't able to be here to say there is something that we can do to help and we can more people get involved in that campaign. Agree to the uncontrolled flow, that's their words, of migrants, not just because the, uh, they're worried about uh, the, the immediate impact on the countries that are nearest uh, the receiving areas. But because... Uh, uh, my name is Abdullah Ali. I come from Darfur in Sudan uh, and claim asylum in August uh, last year. Uh, I have been working for international NGOs back home in Sudan for over 12 years. And at, po at what point I realized that the human being values it not considered by the local authority, which is government of Sudan. So I really I decided to, when I decided to come here to the UK. Uh, I came here in the August, as I said, and uh, hopefully by end of uh, November I got the refugee status. However, that is not the end of the story. 
I, I observed that the national insurance card and the uh, uh, Paimotra Christian card, they slightly different and different name. So I had to wait for eight months to be revised and said to me. And uh, during, that's the reason why I am here, to present to the local people how somebody with uh, even the legal documenting on place, but they don't have the right documents in, in hand, how it's difficult. Somebody is not able to access to the bank account, We're not able to access to the integration loan, which will help refugees to be settled in their new home. Also, applying for a job, also the employer, they have interest to see the, the physical ID card that the national insurance should be almost the same and not the case on mine. And also, I have learned a lot. The system is so difficult that I end up going back and forth between the benefit center and the immigration system. Each department, they ask you different issue and waiting to action to be taken by other department. So at the end of the day, I managed to solve that issue only when I start approaching the MB, who is the members of Parliament, and hopefully after he put in his priority, I managed to get, otherwise it could, I believe it can take even years, years, while already against five years is total. So I spent my eight years just waiting to fix it the correct, uh, I mean fix it the wrong documents. I believe that without talking to the local people, without uh, trying to address with the decision maker, it became, it's really an issue with the, for the somebody who's already has the refugee status and already has been on the difficulty back home, but shouldn't be any problem for him while he gets status in the UK. So that is the reason why I'm here. And also I have to show that in the top of that, I, I never gave up. Also I just continues doing voluntary work, uh, continues do voluntary with City of Sanctuary as personal, personal satisfactory, and also work with the British Red Cross and also voluntary with ethnic youth support. Over five years in US in Swanda, I do some voluntary in order to keep myself motivated and never give up. And that is also to show how I am also willing to provide what, what type of skill I have to the local community as well. And that is the reason. How do you like uh, living in Swansea? Uh, of course, within those circumstances, as I explained, uh, I really enjoy spending time with the Spandi people. I, I never felt that I left my home. People that are welcoming, there's a thousand of people stand up to support asylum seekers and refugees, even with the difficulty of the immigration system. They are really, really, and I have on my list more than 50 people I know in them that are standing back even to support me during the immigration system if they have the power. And that is, I feel, they kept me motivated and I really appreciate that. And I guess for every watch people, they do the same. Yeah. contributing to the communities which are hosting them. So we in the developed world can do much better than that. We in Wales can certainly do much better than that. And while it's right that we... My name is Phil Broadhurst. I work in the Oxfam Bookshop in Swansea in Castle Street. Um, we have a lot of asylum seekers and refugees among our shop team. And uh, we, we all get on perfectly and it's a little example of the way society should be. And so we're very happy to be here today to represent the shop and to support everything that Oxfam are doing in Swansea um, with the City of Sanctuary. And, um, and we're just really happy to be here. It's nice to see so many people here today. You know, we'd always want to see more. Um, and really, we need to be aware that although we call it a city of sanctuary, there are people within Swansea who still don't get the fact that we do need to be welcoming to refugees. And that's why this event is so important. And it's just important that people I think it's important that Oxfam have organised it rather than a, a political grouping because it's spreading it from saying it's about politics to just saying it's about, it's just about life and you know the, the only way that's really going to, the only way that people are really going to change their attitudes about asylum seekers and refugees is by talking to asylum seekers and refugees and so I'd encourage anyone to come in the shop and uh, just meet people, um, go to the drop-ins that Swansea Bay Asylum Seeker Support Group organise and just meet people and talk to people and realise that we're all just the same. We help those who aren't as lucky as we are. Now then, anyone there who thinks that that is too soppy, let's remember that instability anywhere in the world is not good for the world as a whole. <laughs>
Councillor David Phillips, I'm a city centre councillor and I'm here today in support of refugees, immigrants and asylum seekers. Swansea as a port is built upon welcoming people from all over the place, from outside Wales, Swansea, from outside Wales, from elsewhere in the UK and from Europe. As a port, we are always uh, welcoming people. I am from a port in Liverpool, equally built uh, and on, on uh, immigration. The culture of Swansea, as the culture of Liverpool, is widely diverse. And I'm very pleased to say that Swansea is the first city of sanctuary in Wales and was the only the second in the UK. More people have now followed our example and it's important that we, the people of Swansea, the resident population, acknowledge the contribution that asylum seekers and refugees can make to us, to the quality of our lives. In the longer term, there's also the humanitarian issue. It's wrong to refuse people, it's wrong to refuse children who have nowhere else to go. We are a country of welcome. This is a city of sanctuary and we should honour that commitment and welcome people with open arms. The gentleman, the dog of dog. So I'm, 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 um, I'm, I'm past that now. My political shoelaces are undone. So I don't have. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I was told by my friend that um, in some societies, uh, we're here today to support the, the Swansea city of sanctuary in some societies, uh, and its efforts to make uh, Swansea a more welcoming place for migrants, for refugees, and for asylum seekers. And we don't see that asylum seekers are a problem. Um, what we see is that they bring uh, uh, a lot of uh, skills. And also, uh, they bring, they enrich the culture to which they, in, in which they immerse themselves. So we don't see that the, when the politicians say there's a problem, I don't see that there's a problem. What I see is that the people who come in, they actually enrich our culture and make it a better place to live in. I, oh, well, I agree uh, with what my colleague says, and um, uh, I come from a different perspective because I am um, British Palestinian, and um, uh, in 1948. Uh, I was supposed to be living in Palestine, but um, that was not a good choice because it was a choice for exile. And uh, it's lucky that I had a British side to my family. Uh, the Palestinian problem is a very, very big problem. Um, I have to. Uh, uh, and then you think about the twists and turns throughout my uh, life, and um, uh, I wish that initiatives could uh, be uh, taken up uh, uh, to get some justice. Uh, apart from that, I'm very happy to support the city of Sanctuary and always have done. Uh, and I'm happy to stand here and talk to you. Um, let's hope things take a turn for the better, especially in Syria.